not only to give to our power but beyond our power it takes faith to give out what our life depends on it takes faith to give out what we cherish most faith honors jesus the most jesus honors faith the most the book of romans instructs every giver to give in humility simplicity and cheerfulness when we give in humility and simplicity we give for god's sake when we give for god's sake we shall receive a hundredfold when we give for god's sake we are planting seeds which will be multiplied back to us some people see giving as a way of helping those they are giving to as a result they magnify themselves above those they are given to. It is a rare privilege to be in a position to give. A time of giving is a time to show remorse, not a time to show off. A time to give is a time to dishonor ourselves so that the law might be honored by what we have to give. Jesus sat and watched two categories of people. First, those who put money into the offering box out of their wealth. Two, those who put in what they cherished most. He sat down and watched. What you gave is not as important to Jesus as the way you give it. She moves among the congregation during the Monday life service at the synagogue Church of All Nations. Under the influence of the Holy Spirit, he prays for each person in the name of Jesus Christ and sets them free from every negative forces in their lives. He encounters this man who reacts very strangely to the touch of the wise man. Let's watch how he was delivered in Jesus' name. Who are you? We are seven in this place. I am Uzungene. You are Uzungene. I am Prepatanzo. I am Zapune. I am Uzupiande. I am Uzumata. We have come from Uzuta jungle, from planet Jupiter. I came here to war to fight TV Joshua and to fight men. Why do you want to fight us? Yes, because why would TV Joshua become this man? He came and hit his hand on his heart and said, Come! That's why we could not be able to stand him. And now he's here. But we'll fight you and other group. I am the Zungene. I am the Gugunzo. Who are you? This man has been being a threat to us. He started his ministry. Go everywhere. Destroying shrines. He has continued to pay orders everywhere. How long have you been in him? Yes, after the university. He went to the mountain to pray. He was doing 40 and 40 nights. 40 days and 40 nights because he's looking for the supernatural. How did he enter him? Yes, he was praying. Oh, at that 90s, 
Yes, and it had nine days. Behold, a woman with two daughters appeared on the mountain. And it had nine days. He went there because they were trying to carry fire wood. Ah! Shut up, Ahadia. They were trying to carry fire wood. He went there trying to help them. Because they could not be able to carry it. He didn't know that they are spirits. When he helped them, they walked at a, at a distance and disappeared. And from that moment, and 40 days, they came to see this man. They came there. Oh. They said they will give him 580,000 to leave this thing he's doing and travel out of the country. And he agreed. He came down and he traveled out. We caused that man out of 580,000 give him visa. He gave him only 14 days visa to Dubai. He went there to preach the gospel. He don't have anything to do again. They have to arrest him and put him in prison for three months. Uh -huh. Yes, to scatter him. They did another plan again. He was praying again on the mountain when he came back. He was not yet tired. We thought we would weaken him. And they gave him another money to travel to India. We entered in him and caused him to give him one year visa to India. And he, he, we caused this guy to suffer him for five months. He spent five months in Nigeria out of one year visa. At seventh month when he was leaving Nigeria, he was angry. Because of anger, he forgot his yellow card. Get to India in April, New Delhi. Yeah, they are sending him back yeah. to Nigeria. Oh, I am the Kukunso. Yes, I have decided to destroy this man to the highest volume. Now, he's not doing anything. His wife is feeding him. This man you are living in? Yes. Who is he? This man is the man of God. He is a man of God? Yes. He is a pastor? Yes. There is a place in the Bible where he used to study. Psalm 103 verse 7. God made his ways known unto Moses. And his acts to the children of Israel. Yes. John chapter 10 verse 18. I have the power to lay my life down. I have the power to take it up. Yes. Oh. Mark chapter 9 verse 1. Many of you shall not see death until the kingdom comes by power. Yes. What have you done to the family? Oh. In the family, nine persons has died. But this man, they could not get this man because he understands the supernatural. He understands how to travel through the elements. We couldn't get him. We killed everybody. Right now, people are still dying. We have made this man to take a, take a knife and a bottle to kill his wife in the night. But his daughter came to him and started crying and says, Daddy, look at me. You cannot do this. And then because of his daughter, he dropped the knife. The wife says she must go because she's tired. Yes, and I'm here to finish everything because time has come for complete battle. Yes, we are Okokunzo from Uzita planet. Uzita jungle, planet Jupiter. Yes. So how long have you been in this body? More than nine years. I have finished everything. But he's a strong guy. To have destroyed everything about him. Yes, and right now, the Holy War of Israel gave him favor to Qatar to go and work for four years. His people want again for him to send to, to the same guy again. They gave him 20,000 to travel home with that, that same money and seize his, his, his passport, international passport. I am angry. Didn't you know that he is coming here? Yes, we know he's coming here. TB Joshua came and hit his hand on his heart and says, Follow me. That's why you could not be able to stop him. Yes, I'll fight you. Because you save this man. And you cannot save him. And who are you? Look here. I will consume you. This is the arena of liberty. TV Joshua, after the coming of CS of the Grove, yes, there's a heavy revelation. And the ministry has changed. And he has been stopping us. He has done a great damages. Look at this ministry. He's tearing to pieces everything we have hold on. TV Joshua is hearing me. We know his secrets. Matthew 6, verse 6, that is secrets. We know his secrets, but we are going to fight him too. What is the secret? Matthew 6, verse 6. Uh -huh. It's a secret. What he, does he say? He says, he that pray in secret, yes, and close his door while he's praying in secret, his heavenly father shall hold him open. Yes. Now, it is time yes. for you to go. It is time for you to go. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Out! Out! Come here! In the name of Jesus.
of Jesus Christ. Come here, stand here. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you are going out of him. Out! Look here! Out! Out! In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Rise up. How are you, brother? God bless you. How are you? I'm fine, sir. What happened to you? I don't know. I, I, I... You are just from the floor. What happened? I never been on the floor. I never been on the floor. People fall on the floor when I lay down on them. When I lay my hand on them, they fall. I don't, I've never been on the floor before. But you are just from the floor. I don't know. What, what happened I, to you? I don't know. I'll ask you what happened. I don't know what happened. What's... You said you are seven. I'm seven. You say you are seven in number that came here. I am. I'm the only one I'm here. I, I, I don't know. I don't know anybody. I, I came alone. I, I only know that I, I, one of the days my, my TV was operating and I was praying on Sunday and then prayer was very opposite, opposite my television and I, I was praying and I, I heard a voice say, we are the seven one that sent against you. They started mentioning their names. I called my, my daughter and my children I said, any day, any time you hear about Ukukunzo, Uzungene, they are demons, they are the ones that steal people's things and they are the ones that destroy people. So my children, every time they will say, it, if anything happens wrong, they say, that is like Uzungene has come, or it's like Zapune has come. Or. You went for fasting, 40 days, 40 nights. I have done more than that. And you wanted to help a woman? Yes, I, yes, that was the, that nine days of my fasting. I was, I was lying down because even on the, about that seven days, some snake and some animals, when I was tired, was even passing on my body in the night. But not at eight days. I, I was just lying down. So I saw a woman up there like this. The woman was um, cutting, was cutting fire, firewood with the daughter, two girls. So I came over there and they, were, they couldn't carry it. They were trying everything. So I managed to, to rise up and went to help them. I, I took the firewood on the, on the, helped them to cut the firewood. I saw that my body, as if something just entered me, I became thick. And immediately I, I just left the place to turn back again to look them. I didn't stop the I didn't see them again. Then I said to myself, I didn't know that something entered into me. I, I said to myself, oh, this will be spirits, spirits. And I, I don't know, since then, my life changed. Everything was terrible. And you also said, he traveled to Dubai, you brought him back. He traveled to India, you brought him back. Yes, automatically, um, I, 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 I traveled out. I traveled out. And I come back and then I, have, I came back with nothing and I, I went to prison and... I, I was disappointed because the whole thing went, I don't know what's happened to me. The, everything went wrong. I, I couldn't gather anything anymore. The ministry, I prepared to go for the ministry, I prepared very well and... and you and, have a ministry? Yes. A and, pastor? Yes. And you also said you took a bottle and a knife to stab your wife. I was angry one day. I, in fact, I said, let everything finish now. I, I just see myself in the night. I took a bottle and then and a the knife. Physically? Physically. And I sit down and I told my wife, I'm going to give it today. Let us, let the whole thing end here today. I am tired. So that demon that has been tormenting you, tormenting your family, Jesus has cast it out. You are free. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm free. Hallelujah. Thank you. Coming up next, Standard for Life. Emmanuel TV, bringing you the gospel of Jesus Christ. Changing the world. Make God's word the standard for life with Prophet TB Joshua.
You may be seated. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 38. I will take from verse 1. In those days, Ezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaac the prophet, the son of Ammon, went to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord. I think this will answer some of our questions today. Let someone say, Thus say the Lord. You know, last time I, I mentioned to you that we ministers, we can say to you, be healed. When you are not here, I will say as a result of your faith. Be delivered. When you are not delivered, I, I would say as a sort of your faith. But when they now come to God says the law, you have nowhere to hide. Tell your neighbor, when it comes to God says the law, it will rain tomorrow. You have nowhere to hide. It must rain whether the rain have faith or not this is why when you read your bible most especially in the old testament that is the measure the thorough standard that if someone said to you this will happen and it's not happen knowing that he's speaking of himself but the bible never say that if someone said to you, be he, and you are not he, knowing that he saying of himself, the Bible never said that. Thus says the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Let me take the title from Thus says the Lord, home above. When God says the law, you are speaking from home above. Affliction are meant to bring us to the Bible and to our knees. What is your affliction? What is your trial? What is your situation? It's meant to bring you to the Bible and to your knees. When a prophet says, I can see sudden death, measure time death of the incident. He is simply telling you to put your home in order. I think this is what any reasonable and decent person would like to hear when and how. When and what? Everyone would like to hear when and how. Here, we are only passing through. Tell your neighbor, here, yeah. we are only passing through. Yeah. When Ezekiah was sick in bed, he turned his face towards the world, probably towards the temple. By this, we must act 
by faith in every prayer. We must act by faith in every wall, every prayer. The testimony of our conscience is that by the grace of God, I have lived a good life. I have walked closely and humbly with God. That is the testimony. If we pray in sickness, in our situation, though God does not send an answer to us like Ezekiah, yet if by His Spirit Take note of that. If by his spirit he built us, be of good share, our sins are forgiven. We should be happy. Whether we live or not, we should be happy. We have no reason to say we pray in vain. We have no reason to say we pray in vain. If by His Spirit He bids us be of good share. Your sins are forgiven. We should be happy. We should be glad. We have no reason to say we pray in vain. Whether you live or not. God answers us. If he sentences us with strength in our soul, let someone say, God answers us. If he strengthened us with strength in our soul, though not with bodily strength. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, my names are Megda Siluani. I am from South Africa. The problem that brought me to Synagogue Church of Nations was a high bleeding of menstruation. I suffered from this problem since 2003 after I had a baby through a caesarean section. It has affected me a lot whenever i wanted to go to church as i would sit at i would be sitting in a pool of blood so i could not even wear brighter clothes i had to change about 10 pets in a day because the bleeding was excessive in my visit here i managed to get the anointed water from the men of god i then used the water continuously but as i speak with you now children of god the problem has gone I am totally healed and I thank Jesus for my healing. What I would tell to the viewers is that just believe. Faith without works, it is death. And Jesus is alive. You just use this water, you apply it with faith. Instantly you get your healing. Jesus is alive. This water is not just water. This is the power of God. Amen. To God be the glory. We thank God Almighty for your life. Madam, tell us, what were your experiences, those periods that you have in this problem? What I was experiencing by that time, it was very bad because my tummy was actually swollen. 
and I was, I was experiencing a lot of setbacks. Most of the things that I wanted to do, I could not continue. I could not do anything. When I came here, I was in the midst of examinations. But after my prayer, I went back and I wrote the examinations. And I have passed. I graduated on the 14th of March, 2012. Let's put our together for our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you still having swollen belly? No, I do not experience any problem. I am free from anything. We thank God Almighty for this wonderful healing. Now tell us, what is your advice? My advice to any person who is in the latitude or in the grace of receiving this anointed water, please use it. This is God in action. Use it, never doubt. Apply your faith. Thank you, Jesus. My name is Larry Mpofu from Zimbabwe. I came to the synagogue of uh, Church of All Nations in the year 2010, in February, with a problem of the heart. My heart had finished my life. I was at the end of my life. By the look of things, I was sure I was going to die. But a friend of mine introduced me to my Emmanuel TV. I looked at the clips. I then decided to come. And I came here. I was privileged to have the anointed water. This anointed water, I took it to my hotel room. Now, when I go to the hotel room, I used it, prayed over it, in the morning, I woke up, I felt like going to the toilet. What I saw, I don't know what it was. I went back to Zimbabwe. No more pain. It was difficult before, before coming here. I had gone as far as South Africa, Durban, Cape Town, Switzerland. I had the money to spend trying to save my life. But never anything ever worked. So when I came here, got healed, the time came when I wanted to have the doctor's report. I went to my doctor, who had served me for 18 years on this problem. When I got there, the nurses, they asked me, what is your name? I told them. They looked in the files. They say, ah, but he, here we don't have your file. Why? The other nurse said, no, look on the dormant files. She went to check there. They said, ah, you know, we thought you were dead because you are not coming here. You are supposed to be seen by the doctor three times a month. You have not been coming for over a year now. So we thought you are gone. I said, no, I'm still alive. Then they took me into the examination rooms. They examined me. I asked the nurse, Sister, tell me, what is my condition like? He said, hey, you, you are just all right. Otherwise, there's no need for you to come for examination if you are like this. <laughs> As that was not enough, the doctor was to come again. He came and said, Larry, where have you been? You know, I've looked after you for so many years. And you just disappear like that. Why? I'm here today. You can examine me. He started examining me. These are the results. This is the before. This is the after. The after says... There is no more illness in me. You can see the medical reports, the evidence that indeed he has been healed completely from the problem of heart failure for the past 18 years. The results say that I was healed from the heart problem. The experience I experienced during that time when I was in pain I couldn't put on shoes. And 
the, it was burning. Uh, in the morning, if I wake up, I have to first of all wait. To, I, I, I open my eyes. Yes, I'm awake. Now I have to wake up. I take it easy until I'm upright. Gain the balance. After the balancing of sitting upright, I try and stand up again. Get the balance of standing up. Then I start moving. After taking the anointed water, it just disappeared. I don't know how. It just went away. It's not there anymore. The simple advice I can give to anyone who has a problem, whatever problem, if it's the heart like what I used to have, it's only faith, which is the key. Once you have faith, sure you'll be healed. There's no doubt about it. My name is uh, Chikoli Jonathan. I live in at Kutunu. The problem what brought me to Tsinago Church of One Nation is barrenness, uh, low span calm. I drink medicine, go hospital to hospital, no solution. Then I hear Tsinago Church of One Nation. I come here, man of God, pray for me. So that with my wife, he gave me this anointing water. Then I go home, I pray, I spare it. Then we meet like husband and wife. Nine months, my wife is believe baby boy. It's a very Emmanuel. The problem that brought us here for the Synagogue Church of All Nations was in my husband's low spam cam and barrenness for many years. We search for solution or to no avail. When we heard for the Synagogue Church of All Nations, we came here. Then we got a privilege to stay in prayer line. After praying, we received the anointing water. And we met as a husband and wife after I became pregnant. As you can see it now, I am a mother of baby boy now. The name of my baby is Imanes Sorom Tochiku Jonathan Chikodile. They say, brother, I don't want you to go with this case on you. You have the spirit of robbery and you have been robbing. So, please. <laughs> Come here. My name is David Brown. I'm from River State. I'm a graduate of Kingston University from UK. And I came here last Sunday. Last Sunday was my first day of coming here. And the man of God uh, prophesied unto my life and said, There's somebody here who's been caused by the spirit of Amrabi, and I came out for confirmation. And this thing happened way back 15 years ago because I lived with my auntie in Lagos. She was the one that brought me up. Uh, she trained me in UK. I came back and uh, my, um, the, um, the May guard, the, the security man, talked me over and I opened the door where she kept uh, and he went in after we traveled for summer. He went in and into the secret room and stole every valuable, her gold and everything you can ever name of. So when we came back from summer and she, she found out that the door was broken and everything in it was stolen, she called me because she knew that nobody would go in except me and I confirmed and, and told her that uh, it was me that brought a stranger into the house and because she is a spiritualist and she, she cost me with a, my attic cost me with a great cause that all through my life that the prison will be my home and I'll never see good things that there's nothing going to be written out good in my life and since then uh, the spirit of Amrabi came into me when it comes into me I see myself you know going out with keys I open the people's door there's no, there's no door that I do not open I open people's door and I go 
go in instead of me stealing i sit down in the house and the owner of the house will come in and see me there and after catch me and beating me then i'll recover i say oh what am i doing here and I'll be, before that they take me to the uh to, to the station from station they take me to the prison i've been to prison eight good times for about a year and six and six months you know thereabouts and after I, when, when I come out, even I even like the prison because I found out that behind bars was my home. Because when I'm in the prison, nothing happens to me. But when I'm out, you know, the spirit comes in and take me back again. Uh, if I'm out two weeks, I'm, I'm back into the prison until everybody in my community got very tired of me. Even the station where I am got very tired. I never watched Emmanuel TV. It was my uh, fiancé that was watching Emmanuel TV one time, and she saw this boy, Emmanuel, who was delivered, who had the same uh, situation with me, and he was delivered. And she called me and said, we must come to this place with me. I'll be able to come here because the Spirit won't allow me to come here for deliverance. So she forced me into this place, and to God be the glory, on Sunday last, year, last week, the man of God touched my case. Uh, please, man of God, I really need you to help me because I've gone so, so many places for deliverance and no one could, could, no one could help me. I know that here is my final bus stop. And I know that here... You have been to prison how many times now? I, I've, I've been to prison eight times. How many days? A year and six months each. Each? Yeah. Each time? Yes. You spend a year and six months. Yeah. And each time you are in the prison, what are your experiences? When I'm in the prison, everything is cool because that's where the spirit really wants me to be. And I really like there because I prefer hey, there. You I, like I mean, to be in prison? But, uh, you know, because I, I know if I, when I'm out, it takes me back in again. When I'm out, it takes me back in again. So I just prefer being behind bars and man of God. I, I know that this is my final bus stop. I know that I will be delivered because I am here and I will be delivered. Can you just give us a trust history about your, yourself? Two to three minutes. What do you want us to know about you? How you came my, to Israel? Like I said, my name is David Brown. I studied from Kingsley uh, University, UK, London. I'm an architect by profession, but... Uh, this spirit won't allow me to do anything in future. I've been a vagabond. I've been a disgrace to my uh, community. And everywhere I go, this thing, you know, scandals me and makes me look not worthy at all to stay. So I, I found myself alone, alone, in, in cave, in a prison, just alone because nobody really wants to identify with me. Because if they identify with me, I'd rather take something or do something evil. So I just see myself alone in a, in a, in a prison. How does the spirit operate in your life? Well, actually, if I'm with people, when it comes in, I just leave you and start walking with the, to the direction where it leads me. I do not know myself, but when I'm caught in the house of the way, wherever I go in, that's when I realize that I'm in somebody's a different. So I'm in somebody's house. Then I started pleasing, uh, but it will be too late because so I've been in somebody's house. And how do I? in they start asking me how do you get into this house i said by this key by this key you went into and how by the time i know i'm, in, I'm down it to the to the to the to the station from the station to the to the courts be reminded to prison custody now the name jesus will be given to him now and the moment he child that me because not only to deliver him but for him to remain in the Lord. Can you just give him mic and let him shout the name Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ! That is all. It's free. Some weeks later, David Brown came back to testify to the new life he has received in Christ Jesus after his deliverance. Let's listen to him. My name is David Brown. I'm from River State. I'm an architect by profession, uh, a graduate from Kingston uh, University, UK, London. I have a first class degree on architecture. When I came here, I, by the grace of God, 
grace of God found me and the man of God, you know, prophesied that, and said that uh, there's a, 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 a boy here that is being, that, that is caused, is possessed with a spirit of robbery. They say, brother, I don't want you to go with this curse on you. You have the spirit of robbery. I came out and by grace of God, I, I was delivered. And for the first time in my life, I, I found my life a rebirth of a new life and found, found a reality of a true life that I'm living now. How do you know that you are free? The reason why I know that I'm free because some things I do here, I, I don't normally do them outside, especially in the initial time when I was delivered, you know, sometimes it, I, it's like uh, an, an, an antenna, you know, when the spirit comes, it connects into my spirit. So I have that ability, that boldness to, to rebook it and to use uh, the word. Uh, the and I, I rebook such spirit before I wouldn't have such strength to, to rebook or uh, such ability. But now I see myself rebooking the spirit with the word of God. You listen to that? You, you listen to that? One thing I want you to know, if you are delivered from a certain spirit, yes, don't think that it will not come and tempt you again. It will come. But the evidence that you are delivered is that someone is inside you that will say, go, I don't want you again. That is how you know you are delivered. That you will not hear it or it will not come at all. It's lie. Even our Savior, 40 day 49, was tempted when you are delivered the spirit of God take possession of that unclean spirit and it will be there as washed out because he know he will see come and he will not stop coming as far as you are living he will not stop what sometimes we say uh, this is writing. Some people say it's not writing. You just say to yourself, I rebuke you. That is the show you are a child of God. Constant battle between faith and doubt, between good and evil, between love and hatred. So this will continue. If you are a child of God, you have the ability. We call it ability of God to say no. And you go your way. So this is what the Bible means by we are in the war, but we are not part of them. This is the war we find ourselves. Jesus is there to fight for us. I got married uh, 12 December 1999 to a lady, but she, she died during this uh, because of my problem. And left me with uh, three kids and um, I've, I've been since then going in, um, into prison and coming out my kids has, hasn't gotten the opportunity to actually have the love of a father you know I just see them in a season and in some uh, couple of years I'm, I'm back to, the, to, 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 to detention and they don't see me and they don't even have any fatherly love so I appreciate the awesomeness of God in my life because now I I see my life uh, as a responsible father now that can go back to, to the house and the children will be proud of and, you know, have every cause to glorify God for, for my sake. Now I, I can be with people and the Bible says in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 5 and verse 17, say, if a man be in Christ, he is a new creature, behold, all things have passed away and now all things have become new. So we are going to give them two two hundred thousand error. Hallelujah. David Brown has been financially supported with a sum of two hundred thousand naira to continue his new life in Christ Jesus. With this money I think it will enhance me in you know carrying on with my life and uh, I think the man of God has really done great thing because this money will go a long way of uh, making me become uh, somebody in future and not going back to my normal life and you know starting a good a, a, a new beginning opening a new chapter for me and my family too
I know that uh, the many of them in my community and even outside around the world that has difficulty in uh, in coming out of such things. I want to tell them that uh, there's nothing impossible for God. That God can do everything at His own timing. His, his timing is impeccable, and if they trust Him, He works in time, and He will be able to see them through. Just as the prodigal son, He's ready to, with open arms, to receive them wear them in new garments, uh, uh, put a new ring and give them honor in life. They should embrace Christ and come to Him because He is the only way, the truth and the life. Emmanuel. My name is uh, David Brown and the person standing beside me is my wife. I'm from Bunny River State. I came here sometime um, 2010, September, with a problem. Actually, I, my life was nothing to write home about. I was a vagabond. I was nothing, as, as a matter of fact, nothing to write home about because of the, the, the affliction my auntie gave me. So when I came here for deliverance, Thank God that the man of God called me out and said, there's a man here who was caused with the spirit of arm robbery. And I came out and after my deliverance, you know, I went back home. And as I, as I went back home, the, the, the lights of God began to manifest in life. And these are the testimonies I'm about to say. Number one, when I went back home, my auntie who you know, cost me, you know, came back from London and called me. And it was done by an elder in our community who brought her and also called me for reconciliation. And I went there and she laid her hands and denounced all the causes that she has, you know, placed on me. And after that, I began to see my life illuminating with God's radiance and God's awesomeness. And my life began to grow from glory to glory. Despite the challenges ahead of me, because T.B. Joshua said something. He said, there's constant battle between light and darkness. So I began to live my life with God's glory. Not only that, the money, the man of God enhanced me. I took it back home and put it in a business and I, I opened a, a business center, the Vima Venture and uh, the, you know, the center began to yield money and not only that, I got money to you know, get married to my wife here who, who, who is standing beside me and after getting married to her, because she is a nurse by profession, I was able to open a pharmacy for her also These are the pictures of the pharmacies where I open. These are the uh, pictures of my, my uh, shop, my computer shop. So I was able to open a pharmacy for her. And you know, things started going on really good. And everybody who looks at me as nothing began to give me honor. I began to become a celebrity in my community. And people began to see me as, some, as somebody... Uh, you know, be useful to the community. I no longer, they no longer see me as a thief or uh, as a vagabond, but now here has revealed my real self to the world, and they have now realized that of a truth, whosoever the Son of God has set free, he is free indeed. Now, here am I standing before you, a nobody, somebody who has been rejected, denounced by his community. But here am I standing with my wife. Here am I telling you the goodness of God. Here am I showing you pictures of what God has done for me in this synagogue church of all nations. What will be your own life sitting down there? Do you think that God cannot do or God cannot change your situation? 
if God can change me, who was a robber, who was nothing, then God also can change you, who has come to seek him with faith in his heart. So I really want to advise everybody sitting here that look unto God, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Any man that looks to Jesus, it doesn't matter who they call you. It doesn't matter the names they give to you. Jesus can rewrite your story. Jesus can bring the glory because the glory of God is the beauty of God. And he will make you more beautiful and handsome for, I mean, to be held by people. So, child of God, as you're here, please have faith in God. As God has changed me, he can change your situation. And that's why I have come with my wife for more grace to stand in the time of challenges. Because I know it's not easy. He said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them all. It's God that will deliver me from all afflictions. Man of God, I've come for you to impart more grace onto my family, to stand against trials and temptation. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Put your hands beautifully, beautifully. Indeed, our God is good. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. My name is Gloria David Brown. I'm from Akwaibum State. The man standing beside me is my husband. I thank God for his deliverance. And I thank the man of God, Prophet T.B. Yeshua, for the, for the love he has shown to him during the time of his challenges. We are making him to become somebody. We are in the community where we stay, I read him to be nobody. So I really thank God for his love towards him and his faithfulness. Prison is not a home for my husband again. He's a responsible man to me now and a loving husband. So I love him so much and I love God also who has changed him for me. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. I want to welcome our Father. Uh, your, your wish, sir. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Looking at our father, you know, is our grandfather. <laughs> I, I, don't, I'm not, I will not stand here as a, as a boy and begin to introduce grandpa. Let, let grandpa talk. Let's hear. You are welcome, sir. Thank you. I am Evangelist C.S. Up the Grove from the United States of America. And I want to thank God for the privilege of being here in Africa for the first time. A global evangelist, revivalist, author, renowned minister of God, and one of God's generals, C.S. Up the Grove. For 68 years, he has been preaching the gospel all over the world. Born into a humble family in Florida, USA, the second youngest of 21 siblings, he had discovered the direction of his calling from the tender age of 15. Since that time, he has traveled the world with a message of hope and salvation that Jesus Christ is the healer and deliverer to hundreds of thousands around the globe. During his ministry, countless people have come to the knowledge of God's saving grace through the anointing of God upon his life. Numerous people have been touched, healed, delivered, and blessed through the powerful ministry God has given him. Now 83, he is still active in the ministry and is dedicated to reaching as many souls for Christ as he can. Evangelist C.S. Up the Grove has also received various awards. At the age of 80, he received an award in honor, appreciation, and celebration of his commitment, covenant, and excellence. Respected for his contribution to the body of Christ, for his faithfulness to his calling, Evangelist C.S. Up the Grove has been recognized, honored, and presented with this award. God's General. In commemoration of his 80 years in kingdom service, and his dedication, he was given the Living Legend Award. When you do what God has put in your heart to do, you will make a difference in your world. 
God's general CS Up The Grove is truly one with a difference. This is Evangelist CS Up The Grove, and my biggest advice to you is to keep watching Emmanuel TV. God will bless you for that. Amen. Uh, you know, I knew William Branham. I knew Jack Coe. I knew Oral Roberts. I knew these men. I go all the way back to the Voice of Healing days. And, and I knew all of the signs. I've been in their services, and I've rejoiced. I've been with Catherine Kuhlman. I've seen so many. But listen, everything that I'm seeing in the ministry right now of, of Prophet Joshua supersedes anything that I have seen under those ministries. It, it's a greater measure, and it's exactly what Brother Allen said would happen. Emmanuel. I want to praise God for this privilege. I'm 83 years of age. <clears throat> Been married 61 years to the same wife. Four children, two boys and two girls, and my oldest girl is here with me, Brenda. And I'm walking on holy ground. <clears throat> Many years ago, when I was working with great men of God like A. A. Allen, William Branham, Oral Roberts, R. W. Shambach, great men of the past. And God gave me an opportunity to stand on their shoulders. And I was riding one day in the automobile with A. A. Allen. And he looked over at me and he said, Brother Up the Grove, I may not be living when this comes to pass but I believe you will. And he began to describe this place. He began to talk about a man that would walk out under the anointing and the power of the Almighty God. He further described all of the miracles that I have witnessed since I have been here. On Thursday, when the wise men began to minister, I couldn't help but sit there and weep because of the fulfillment of the prophecy that the man of God had given me. A. A. Allen said, Brother Up the Grove, there will be a multitude of people from all over the world that will hear simultaneously. And this was before, many years before,